Now joining us in the studio is Professor Tunji Asaolu, Global Vice President, UN World Congress of Diplomats at the Baku Conference. Well, Professor, thank you so much for joining us on the program Africa Weekly. Thank you for inviting me. Now briefly help us put in perspective what stood out for you at this uh, year's COP29 forum in Baku. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, let me... Let me give a little background of uh, about the COP29 per se. Uh, I think in general is COP is a platform that was set up by the United Nations Framework Convention on the Climate Change, mm. that uh, where the global leaders meet annually to discuss about the challenges facing climate change globally. Uh, this year edition is 29th of it. Uh, surprisingly, I think uh, the, the COP29 was undermined. Undermined, it says that uh, the country hosting it, uh, I think uh, it's a great surprise for everyone, including myself, to see the level of uh, preparedness and engagement that uh, Azerbaijan's put together to host this COP29 edition. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, uh, what actually stood out for me in particular was the, the increased sense of urgencies and the, the collaborations amongst uh, the member state countries, not only Africa, uh, is the global change of uh, becoming a great awareness that uh, um, a common problem that uh, have to, you know, given a common solution across the world uh, and i think this level uh, of um, responsibility have made all the country to come together to make sure that um, this requires the collective action that no country want to be left behind so i see the great you know the increased level in participation and everyone want to be involved so no country want to be left behind so to me i think it's also a plus to that uh, and again the the focus on this year edition, which is talking about the climate finance. Uh, you know, when you talk about the finance, so everybody wants to also be involved, so no country wants to be left behind. Uh, mm. And I think, to me, that also stood out. So, so these are the things, among others, that actually take place in uh, Baku, Azerbaijan. So w w what you've said, are you satisfied with the level of engagement put forward by delegates, you know, from various African countries, especially Nigeria? Yes, I witnessed a lot of uh, the level of engagement, particularly from the African countries. Yes, I can say that I'm, I, I, I am particularly pleased with the level of uh, robust participation coming from the African country, particularly our country from Nigeria. Yes, I visited um, the, Afri uh, the Nigeria pavilion so many times, and I see the level of engagement and activities that are going on daily. I, I could also remember the uh, event that took place um, where we able and do the celebrate uh, Africa Day. Uh, I mean, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria Day has the Nigeria Pavilion, the Ministers of Women Affairs, Minister of uh, Environment. I think they, uh, they, 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 surprised, they surprised me in particular with the level of robust engagement and the uh, extracts that they also put in place. So at the African level, and I think, uh, like I said, it's, a, uh, it's an ice opener that mm. um, you know, just like the way that it used to be, that nobody cares about what is going on globally. And I think Africa also realized that, um, um, they, that, that, that there is a need for them to be united to tackle the common problem that we have. Uh, so for this reason, uh, the, even before now, that the, uh, a team was set up that they called that the, the Africa Climate Negotiation Team, which they have already agreed on a position even before in the time of COP29. So with that common position, uh, which they took, even to the COP29, I think it's also agreed to um, make them to speak with one voice. And this time around, I can see that um, uh, with what they have agreed upon, there is no way that the Africa will be left behind. Uh, okay, now you, you delivered a lecture on sustainable environment. Could you briefly share your experience with us? Yeah, uh, it's also an opportunity for me to, me, uh, for me to also let my voice uh, in that kind of... Uh, the highest level of the international engagement, I find it as a great uh, excitement and a, a privilege and opportunity for me. And uh, that gave me an opportunity to 
or also, you know, let my insight into what uh, actually discussed at the COP29. Uh, the topic, the paper that, that I was giving was uh, the topic was uh, importance of sustainability in today's world. Under it, I, I was be able to highlight uh, how we can, uh, you know, introduce sustainability into uh, to tackle the environmental challenges, uh, such as socio-economic issues, uh, and I make it very clear that um, uh, sustainability. Uh, it's a necessity, not a luxury, because where we are talking about the Africa we want, Africa we want to need a, a, a serious commitment, uh, a lot of discipline, uh, so we can't sit down in our comfort zone and be talking that, okay, yes, we, want, we need Africa that we want. So I let them understand that the Africa we want should be also be the Africa that the world needs. So therefore, a level of commitment, engagement, and seriously, resilience need to also be put in. So these are the things that I also highlight uh, in my presentation, which, uh, which I also believe that it has a, a global recognition and it was acceptable by all. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much, Professor Tunji. Thank you for your time with us on the program Africa Weekly. Thank you for coming. Thank you once again for inviting me. You're welcome. Very welcome. Well, that has been Professor Tunji Asaolo, Global Vice President, United World Congress of Diplomats. The program continues in a moment. Just stay with us.